turn to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. When the Pharisees gathered to Jesus with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands, holding to the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites. As it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. And he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father and mother must surely die. But you say, If a man tells his father or his mother, Whatever you would have gained from me is Corban, that is, given to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God. By your tradition that you have handed down, and many such things you do. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations in our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Something very strange has happened in our culture over the past few years. People can gain power by portraying themselves as victims. One of the easiest ways to betray yourself as a victim is to take offense at something. If someone offends you, then you claim that you're a victim and acquire the power of the victim. As a result, people are finding new and more creative ways to take offense. And it's getting ridiculous. We're almost at the point that we're afraid to move or speak for fear that someone might get offended at you and become and then you become the target of a lawsuit. Jesus encountered a similar problem in the reading that we just heard. Listen again to the words from our text. Now when the Pharisees gathered to him with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands properly holding to the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? Notice, that the problem isn't that the disciples didn't wash their hands. The problem is that they didn't wash their hands according to the tradition of the elders, a special kind of ceremonial washing. The scribes and Pharisees take offense because the disciples didn't wash their hands the right way. Now the phrase, tradition of the elders, has a certain ring to it. It sounds very official. And very noble. It sounds like a good thing. The problem is that the hypocrites among the scribes and the Pharisees studied Holy Scripture and the tradition of the elders in order to determine what they could get away with and still consider themselves righteous according to the law. They were interpreting the law in a way they wanted to interpret it and, con and condemning everyone who didn't agree with them. Does that sound familiar today? It should, because our culture still does that today. 
And Jesus had very little patience with hypocrites. He very quickly showed that the scribes and Pharisees valued their tradition above the Word of God. He even showed how their traditions allowed them to violate the Word of God as given by Moses. The scribes and Pharisees were teaching and practicing a man-made religion instead of the faith given by God. Jesus said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. You leave the commandments of God and hold to the traditions of men. Notice that it's Jesus who quotes the Old Testament. It's Jesus who calls for faithfulness to God, and not just an outward hypocrisy. We often ignore the fact that Jesus is the old-fashioned, ultra-conservative, doctrinal purist who's always taking his hearers back to the Word of God. Jesus pointed out that while the scribes and Pharisees were offended that the disciples didn't wash their hands the right way, they also broke the actual commandments of God. For example, they used their tradition to avoid caring for their parents. Jesus said to them, you have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, if a man tells his father or his mother, whatever you would have gained from me is Corban, that is given to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down. And many such things you do. These words from Jesus invite us to ask some very uncomfortable questions. Do I worship God with my lips but reject him in my heart? Do I express my own ideas as true doctrine? Do I have any tradition that rejects the commandment of God? How often do I behave exactly like the scribes and Pharisees, offended by every little thing, while I myself ignore the Word of God? Ultimately, acquiring power by taking offense does no good and makes life miserable. It's just another way to be a bully. It's as King Solomon said, hatred stirs up strife, but love covers all offenses. He also said, good sense makes one slow to anger, and it is his glory to overlook an offense. By the power of the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Peter also wrote, love covers a multitude of sin. Instead of taking offense, we have to seek ways to build one another up. Although the scribes and Pharisees were indeed foolish with their washing rituals, there is another kind of washing that God did give for all people. As we witnessed this morning, Jesus said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. This baptism is not a tradition of the elders. Instead, it is the word of the Christ, who is both God and the Lord. By the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Paul wrote, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order the body of sin might be brought to nothing 
so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. These words teach us that the washing of holy baptism joins us to the cross of Christ. Think about that. This morning, Cason was joined to the cross of Christ. Through your baptism, you were joined to the cross of Christ. Therefore, the washing of holy baptism delivers the forgiveness of sins that Christ earned with His suffering and death on the cross. This baptism works forgiveness of sins, rescues from death and the devil, and gives eternal salvation to all who believe this. The Greek word for wash in the reading that we just heard is baptismo. This is the root for the word for baptize. If we use this word in the reading that we just heard, we would hear, for the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they baptize their hands, holding to the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they baptize. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the baptizing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. The scribes and Pharisees were right in thinking that washing was important. They were wrong in thinking that it was the washing of the tradition of the elders. The important washing is the washing away of sin for the sake of the suffering and death of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit delivers that forgiveness of sins through the washing of holy baptism. This washing even delivers forgiveness for the, uh, forgiveness for the sin of taking offense on our own terms rather than when we obey the word of God. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen.